In our last episode, we solved the railroad problem. But now, we have to deal with the Brotherhood of Steel. And it's not good enough just to destroy them in combat. Father says that there are more Brotherhood out there. We need to send a message. And to find out exactly how we're going to send this message, he sends us to talk with Madison Lee in Advanced Systems. Dr. Lee. What can I do for you? And despite knowing absolutely nothing about Liberty Prime, having never heard about Liberty Prime in the Capital Wasteland, and having not been introduced to Liberty Prime at the Boston Airport, we find a dialogue option to talk about Liberty Prime. What have you got to help me with Liberty Prime? It's that time then, is it? The Brotherhood needs to be taken down, and it needs to be done now. All right, all right. Calm down. It's nothing. Never mind. All right. Sean says it's time. Ah, that. Well, let's get to it. Dr. Orman, over here, please. It's time. What now? I'm still working over the code that the robotics sent over. The algorithm is a mess. It's not even close to peak efficiency. It would seem we've run out of time. Let's go. We're going to cover the basics of the operation as it stands now. Dr. Orman has done most of the prep work, so I'll let her explain. Okay, thanks. Is this really exciting, or is it just me? So, you know that the Brotherhood's main operation is at the airport, right? I'm aware of that, yes. Okay, good. I don't know much about their situation. Okay, well, I guess I just told you. It's their main base in the Commonwealth. I didn't really know for sure. Well, I guess now you do. What can you tell me about the airport? Well, there are a few key buildings that are still structurally sound, but no pre-war aircraft are still in service. If they were a little less intelligent, we wouldn't even be talking about this. We'd have just swarmed them with synths. But they're not idiots. They've managed to generate an EM field that's messing with our ability to relay in. What sort of EM field? What's it doing? Basically, just scattering any suitable complex signals, like the ones from our relay, preventing us from getting close. Sounds like a ground assault will be necessary, then. Maybe. But not just that. They'll be somewhat prepared for it. Synths are still the best option. The problem is getting them there. And you too, for that matter. So we just relay onto the airship and sabotage it. Won't do us any good. There's no direct connection between their robot and the airship. So the immediate area around their encampment is a no-go. They don't, however, have the entire airport covered. We can relay you in to a point at the edge of the airport, and then you can get in and take down the generators. Am I going to know these generators when I see them? You should, yeah. They're just blanketing the whole spectrum, so there should be quite a light show. That can't be the whole plan. No, it's just the first part. Your job then is to get closer to the main camp. So I'm by myself out in the open? Way too much risk. Only at first, and it won't be that bad. We'll have the element of surprise, if nothing else. Exactly. You'll have surprise on your side. Should give you some time before they can organize a real defense. For every generator you take down, it means we can start relaying in synths, giving you even more of an advantage. And, oh, I almost forgot. Take these. And these would be... Oh, you'll like this. Uh, thanks. More ammo is always useful, I guess. No, no. Let me explain. Whatever it is, I hope it's reliable. Of course it is. Oh, thanks. Grenades. Sure, I can always use grenades. No, no, they're not grenades. This thing, and I haven't come up with a good name for it yet, it basically deploys a beacon marker. Wherever they land, we can lock onto them and relay synths directly to that position. If there's a hot spot, you can drop synths right on it. We've only got a few of these, so put them to good use. Don't go tossing them into the bay. Oh, great. The day is won. I can see it now. We'll see what you think when you're neck deep in Brotherhood soldiers. What are these reinforcements supposed to do? They're going to help you buy some time, while you're completing the real objective. I'm not going to beat the Brotherhood with this. Toys aren't going to help me. Hard to please, aren't you? Okay, that's pretty good. I'm impressed. I know, right? I mean... Thanks. I thought it was neat. But still, it's just to help. Your real job will be to reach Liberty Prime. You know the deal with that, right? Not a clue. Okay. I'll let Dr. Lee fill you in. Yes, well... I don't need the details. Well, you kind of do, because it's the whole point of this. Dr. Lee? Yes, well... What's Liberty Prime? Dr. Lee can give you the rundown. Yes, well... The Brotherhood discovered him. An old pre-war military project that never saw the light of day due to power problems that couldn't be solved. With my assistance, they were able to get his reactor running and use him against their enemies. What did you do? I designed and oversaw the building of the reactor that ultimately solved the power problems. 
Well, great. Helping the Brotherhood has really worked out well for us. Oh, spare me. It was ten years ago. You were sleeping peacefully in your little tube while I went through a very special kind of hell. You have no right to judge me. So it's your fault the thing is here now. You have no idea what I went through. The awful choices I had to make. No idea. That... That was ten years ago. One of many things that led me to abandon my old life and seek out the Institute. That's quite an achievement. In objective terms, yes, it was. But the things I went through, that project included, ultimately caused me to seek out something better. It's what led me to the Commonwealth and to the Institute. The point here is that in designing the power system for the robot, I had full knowledge of every onboard system. I know exactly what it is capable of, and precisely how to exploit those capabilities. It's the Brotherhood's giant robot. Right. They think it's their ultimate weapon. We're going to show them it's ours. We've taken everything we know, made a few modifications based on what we think they've done with it in the past ten years, and, this part was my idea, uploaded the whole thing into a modified synth, capable of delivering the virus directly into Liberty Prime. The little guy is going to be exposed and vulnerable, so you'll have to keep an eye on him. Make sure he doesn't get shot, you know? What exactly is this virus going to do for us? Well, if nothing else, it'll take over the weapon systems and establish their airship as a primary target. You can figure out what happens next. I don't know if this is a good idea. Seems unnecessary to go to these lengths. Oh, I think it's a great idea. I mean, really, who do they think they are? Using robots against the Institute? Come on! I don't need some walking tin can to take them down. Need? Maybe not. But we want to send them a message, right? Make sure they leave us alone for good. Turning Prime against them will do that. With Liberty Prime on our side, that'll give us a hell of an advantage. He's not going to go stomping around, and he won't be taking orders. But he will have his weapons and targeting systems overridden. And he'll absolutely recognize their airship as the primary communist target in the Commonwealth. So your end goal is ultimately pretty simple. Get to the robot, then hold the position while the synth does his thing. Oh, and don't worry, we'll pull you out of there before everything explodes. If you have any questions, now's the time to ask. Otherwise, they'll be waiting for you in the relay room. What happens to Liberty Prime after this? They'll be destroyed along with the rest of the Brotherhood. Have we got a plan B? We don't need a plan B. This will work. Anything else? What have I got for backup? Once the generators are down, we'll be able to throw everything we've got at them. And I do mean everything. No questions. Let's do this. Very well. Good luck to you. Dr. Lee might not show it, but I can tell she's excited about having the reactor online. Examining our inventory, we see that Rosalind gave us three Institute beacons. These are the grenades that she said will relay in a bunch of synths. But we only get three of these, so we need to use them sparingly and strategically. So the Brotherhood had a big secret. They brought with them Liberty Prime. Now we understand why Maxon told us to reach out to Madison Lee in the Institute when we got here. She was the one who designed the reactor. They could have used her help. We learned exactly how the Brotherhood used Liberty Prime and the Capital Wasteland in my series on the full story of Fallout 3. And we learned what happened to Liberty Prime and why he now needs to be repaired in my series on the full story of Broken Steel. The game assumes that we get far enough along in the Brotherhood of Steel's story that we learn about Liberty Prime from them. But in this gameplay, I hadn't. I had worked exclusively with the Institute. So this character had never heard of Liberty Prime until this moment. And yet... He seemed to know enough about Liberty Prime to ask questions about it. Considering he's been in a vault for the last 200 years, I don't know how that's possible, especially since before the war, Liberty Prime was a secret military weapon. The press, certainly not the public, shouldn't have known about it. At any rate, we now understand what Father meant by using the Brotherhood's technology against them. The Institute's strategy is to install a virus into Liberty Prime that will make it think that the Pridwin is a communist aggressor, and it will fire upon the Pridwin, destroying the Brotherhood. I think the Brotherhood would learn quite a few lessons from such an event. After all, the interesting thing about this is that the Brotherhood's whole philosophy is that technology in the wrong hands is too dangerous. 
they've then decided that their hands are the best hands and they should have all technology. But if the Institute is successful at this, they're proving to the Brotherhood that even in the Brotherhood's hands, advanced technology is dangerous. If the Brotherhood can't prevent something like this from happening, then even in their hands, advanced technology can be deadly. A pretty compelling message to send. Now, we can't just fast travel to the Boston airport. The Institute has a specific point they want to send us to. And so taking the elevator all the way up to the relay room, we can enter the relay. We arrive in a rundown shack on the outskirts of the Boston airport. And if we haven't been here before, we discover it for the first time. We see a parking garage out the window. We can loot some minor scrap and first aid in this shack. And then moving out and heading west, we arrive right outside the airport. We are by the front gate. We see Liberty Prime surrounded by scaffolding right before us. We could walk that way, but it's probably guarded really well. We could go into the parking garage we saw, where we find an elevator that brings us to the underground ruins of the Boston airport. From here, we can navigate through a ghoul-infested terminal to find a door at the end of a staircase that brings us up behind the Boston airport. And from here, if we have good stealth and good lockpicking, we can sneak into the Boston airport, avoiding the Brotherhood patrols outside. But I don't have good stealth nor do I have good luck picking. So instead, we're gonna go around. Moving southwest, we can try to navigate through some of these airplane wreckages, only to discover that the wreckages themselves are patrolled by Brotherhood. Right here. Surprise assault, fan out. We lost someone. After clearing the patrols, it appears that we haven't alerted the base yet. We can still try to stealth in. We see a giant hole in the concrete wall of the airport. It appears that we've killed the guards, and so sneaking in, we can take a look around. There are a few soldiers milling about here, and this isn't a stealthy character, so we'll have to fight through them the old-fashioned way. Something's out there. Get! This is why you always keep your weapons reloaded. Yo. Give me some fire support. Elder. All right, so far so good. These guys aren't so tough and I didn't feel the need to use the Institute beacons just yet. This appears to be some sort of storage room or armory, and so moving around, we can loot a variety of different ammo containers. But to complete our mission, we need to move up. Heading west, we encounter more resistance. And rounding a corner, we find Proctor Quinlan. Elder Maxon. What was he doing down here? Oh well, one Proctor down. Quinlan wears the unique piece of armor called Quinlan's Armor. It's not that great. It has a DR of 1 and an ER of 15. It has no other bonuses. But for the collector, it's worth bearing in mind that this is the only way to get it unless we pickpocket it off of him. There is a desk with a terminal here that's actually involved in a Brotherhood quest, and so we'll cover the contents later. A door leading back outside, and then we find a master-locked security gate that we ran past a moment ago in the southwestern wall. I couldn't pick it, but if we could, inside we find an end-of-dungeon steamer truck, some ammunition, a laser rifle, a footlocker, and a novice-locked footlocker with a duffel bag and a metal crate on the other side of this big concrete pillar. There's a master lock door leading outside. Had my character been a bit more stealthy and able to pick master locks, this would have been a preferable way to infiltrate the airport. 
But with everyone dead on this lower floor and all the rooms explored, we now need to head upstairs. And I have a feeling this is where the real battle begins. Racing upstairs, we find the vertebrate landing pad guarded by aspirants and knights. And the first generator is on the landing pad. With the first generator destroyed, the Institute begins to relay in synths. A number of knights in power armor race towards the landing pad, but we can try to dodge them and leave them to the synths that we summoned. Focusing on the next generator, we can race northwest. We pass by a tunnel that leads to an air traffic control tower. We need to explore that, but the next generator is right here. And with that, more synths relay in. Now, it was hard to see, but Proctor Teagan was just killed by some of our synths. Looks like many of the members of the Pridwin have already come down to join the fight. Proctor Teagan does wear a unique suit of armor called Teagan's Armor. It looks a lot like Scribe's Armor. And like Quinlan's, it's not that impressive. It grants two damage resistance and five energy resistance. Another good find for the collector, this can only be obtained during this battle or pickpocketed off his inventory. With this room clear, the synths and coursers focus fire on Brotherhood down this pathway, but we need to find the third and final generator. So while they're busy, we can turn back around and move down the passageway towards the air traffic control tower. But this is guarded. Moving to the elevator, we can activate it and take it up to the top of the air traffic control tower. We find this lightly guarded with robots, and we can destroy the final generator. At last, the Institute can relay in at will. We now need to reach Liberty Prime to install the virus. Heading back downstairs, we see that our synths and coursers died. The Brotherhood is still alive. We can use this opportunity to throw an Institute beacon. Is someone present? And that clears them out. Heading down this tunnel, we arrive at the scaffolding surrounding Liberty Prime. We find Liberty Prime being guarded by Proctor Ingram. But she doesn't carry any unique loot. With Proctor Ingram dead, we can use our last two synth beacons. This is gonna flood the area with synths to protect the Institute virus as it makes its way to the top of Liberty Prime. A uniquely named synth virus unit strolls up to the back of Liberty Prime. It begins to install the virus. Initiating transfer. Please defend this position. But by now, the Brotherhood knows they're under full attack and they throw everything they have at us. We have to run around killing Brotherhood while trying to stay alive. No. Core systems, no. initializing. Hiding encryption. But then, a vertebrate from the Cambridge Police Station lands and out jumps Paladin Dance, Knight Rees, and Scribe Halen. We've got to kill them. Hostile software detected. Communist subversion likely. No. Paladin Dance has little interesting loot, except for the Brotherhood of Steel hood. 
This is apparently something that many soldiers wear, but Dance is the only one who actually has it on his inventory in the game. We don't have to kill him to get it. Once he's recruitable as a companion, we can always trade with him to take it off his inventory that way. But Dance's hood is the only hood in the game. As a piece of armor, it's unremarkable, granting zero DR and only two energy resistance. So, mainly for the collector. Neither Scribe Halen nor Knight Reese have any unique loot. Accessing central processor. Then, as the process nears completion, Elder Maxon himself arrives on Vertebert. The Vertebert drops him into the battle. Sometimes I have found him at the bottom of the stairs leading up to Liberty Prime, but oftentimes they drop him on the rooftop of the airport, and we can only reach this by climbing the scaffolding. If we don't race up to him, he rains down hot fire upon our heads with his Gatling laser. Maxon wears what is probably the best piece of loot we can get from this battle. Maxon's Battle Coat. It grants 50 DR, 0 ER, but also grants plus 1 to perception. But the reason it's so valuable is because it can be upgraded with Ballistic Weave. When fully upgraded, it's better than a railroad armored coat. However, Maxon can't be pickpocketed, unlike Quinlan and Tegan. So the only way to get this battle coat is to kill him in combat. He also carries the unique Gatling laser, Final Judgment. Final Judgment has the rapid legendary effect, which gives it 25% faster rate of fire and 15% faster reload. When combined with the Charging Barrels mod, you can increase the rate of fire for this weapon up to 41.5%. Combined with the quadrupled per shot damage of the Charging Barrels mod, Final Judgment is arguably the most powerful weapon in the game. It's accurate, it fires quickly, you can reload it quickly, and its fusion core ammunition is pretty plentiful. Of note, Elder Maxon wears a unique suit of power armor inscribed with the Elder Brotherhood insignia. This battle is the only way to obtain that armor in the entire game. He wears it in no other circumstance. And so if we want it, we have to choose this ending. Finalizing upload in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Operation complete. Or whatever you are. Shutting down. At last, the virus is installed, and Liberty Prime comes to life. Updated tactical assessment. Red Chinese presence detected. Protocol. Aerial incursion by communist forces cannot succeed. Initiating directive 7395. Destroy all communists. You must die. Time to go, sir. We're relaying to a safe location.
the Institute relays us out of the battle just in the nick of time. The Pridwin, on fire, falls from the sky. And when it hits the Boston airport, it detonates like a hydrogen bomb. Nothing survives. No man, no woman, no piece of technology. The Brotherhood and the Commonwealth is gone. This leaves the Institute the sole remaining power of significance in Boston. We did it. We secured the Institute's future. And we can now head back to give Sean the good news. If we try to get close to the Boston airport, now we find the entire place on fire, of course. And this fire lingers for a while. If we get too close, we do take burn damage, so we can't explore this ruin yet. The fire burns for several days, but eventually it does die out. And when it does, we can come back to explore. We find the wreckage of the Pridwin absolutely covers the airport. We find Brotherhood corpses scattered amongst the wreckage. And if we're lucky, we can find some named corpses as well, which is useful if we didn't get a chance to loot them during the battle. But the way the game works, Corpses will despawn after being loaded into the game after a few days. So if you wait too long to come back, the named corpses might be gone, even if we find other Brotherhood corpses here, which is a problem because the fire lasts so long. So if we didn't get to loot the named corpses during the battle, we have to wait just long enough for the fire to die down, but not so long that the corpses despawn. Even if they do despawn, it's still possible to loot their weapons, because the weapons exist outside of their inventory. But any armor they were wearing disappears from the world completely. I came back hoping to find the body of Lancer Captain Kells. I didn't see him during the battle, and I sadly never found his corpse here either. The reason I wanted to loot him is because he does have a unique item. He wears the Airship Captain's Hat which grants no damage or energy resistance, but does give us plus one to charisma and plus one to endurance. It's also a unique hat. It's the only one in the game. It looks a lot like a sea captain's hat or a submariner's hat, but it's got the Brotherhood of Steel insignia on the crown. But thankfully, we don't have to kill Kells to get it. We can pickpocket him. Kells also wears a unique variant of the Brotherhood Fatigues. It looks just like the regular Brotherhood Fatigues, only it's got a navy blue sweater. Oddly enough, it's also worse than the regular Brotherhood Fatigues, with five less damage resistance. Captain Cade, the ship's medic, also wears a unique variant of this outfit with a white or light gray sweater underneath. I sadly didn't find his corpse among the wreckage either, and he never showed up in the battle. The only other named soldier on the Pridwin is Scribe Naraya, but she doesn't have any unique loot. She didn't show up during the battle, and we don't find her corpse here amongst the wreckage. But I'm all out of time. In our next episode, we'll see what changes in the Commonwealth once we side with the Institute. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in another way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos and access to ox emojis that they can use in my video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon for the final video in the Institute's full story in Fallout 4.